Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be showcasing some of the mods that I've done to my Nmouse 4K or Zalman ZM M600R. So this video was requested to me by um, one of the guys on the Discord server that I hang out on. He wants to mod his into a different shell, and so I'd show you guys kind of how I did that. So the shell that I picked, this is, this is the base mouse that I picked. It's just your basic Logitech mouse shape. Um, it's very similar in shape to the G100S. The G100S is slightly different, it does feel a little bit smaller though. Um, so if you guys want to see the part model for this, the manufacturer part mo number is M-BJ58. So um, I have a few here that are modern and a few that are not. Here is the Nmouse 4K PCB and then here is one of the cables that I've debraided. So let's just go ahead and show you I'll start off by showing you guys what an unmodified shell looks like. So to disassemble these, this is really nice. You don't have to take off any Teflon feet. There's just a single screw in the back. And the shell just pries up and out. And we can see here that we have the upper shell along with the clicks, these the, the left and right mouse buttons. Those you can just press on these tabs and remove it. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to show you details in the video because honestly, if you're modding this, you should uh, be pretty smart with like tinkering and stuff already before you even attempt this. Um, so these these I have like I you're going to have to cut this up a little bit, um, as you can see there. But uh, I do notice that each one feels slightly different. The way that it see how this one rattles. And then let's see if this one rattles. Oops versus this one does not. So those actually feel quite different when you're clicking. Um, this one feels stiffer, this one feels more raw, but this one has a bit too much springiness to it. So you're gonna have to decide what you like. Uh, that's honestly why I have so many of these shells here is because I've been testing out different parts and seeing what I like more. And then inside of this um, 58 shell, I guess I'll just call it the original Logitech shape, you have a uh, weight in here that you can just take out with the screw there. Um, down here on the first half, you we're going to have to see, if you guys take a look here, the Nmouse 4K, so one of the big problems with modding a mouse shell, and probably the biggest honestly, is the switch alignment. So luckily for this, you guys can see there's the two contact points on the left and right switches, and those are obviously going to line up perfectly with the switches on the stock PCB. Okay. The Nmouse 4K, luckily, the switches are basically the same distance apart. And so that allows it to um, that allows this switch this the right and left click part to actually actuate those. Otherwise you'd have to do some more modification. But um, let's just go ahead and dive right into what you're gonna need to change. So first of all, let's start with the upper shell. I'd first start by removing this upper weight. As you know, I'll just show you guys a comparison between two. So I remove the weight from this one. And then you can also see this piece right here, that kind of eye shaped beam piece. That is actually only for the ball mice option. This M-BJ58 shell comes in a ball version, which is what I'm holding right here. Um, so you can go ahead and cut that off. You're going to need to save all this stuff. You want to save these posts because that's what the right and left mouse button piece goes on to. Um, and then you're also going to see at the front here, the cable is slightly out of spec. So on this one, you can see this nub is still here. And then over here, I remove that. Next. Um, I'm just going to show you guys. Let's take one that's already modded. If I put this PCB in here and I try to put the shell on, you guys can see it's not going to close. It's actually caught on the scroll wheel there. So what you need to do, as you can see, I've opened up, I've created a little bit more of a gap. So over here, there's just this one single little cutout. And here I've expanded that cutout. And then also this rounded surface at the front here, I've expanded that forward more. And then um, also these pieces over here. So 
on the stock shell, these raised pieces, those actually contact the mouse wheel, so you need to remove those, and you can see I've removed them from this side. Um, and I think that's just about it for what you need to do to the top shell. Uh, yes, okay, now moving on to the bottom shell. Go ahead and remove this stuff. So the bottom shell takes a little bit more modification, but it's still not too bad. Unfortunately, those are both the same color. Um, whatever, I guess you guys would just have to deal with that. So, unmodified, modified. You can tell because this one's all cut apart. Um, so first of all, we need to remove the, the mounts for the scroll wheel. Logitech uses a sliding scroll wheel, but the end mouse uses an encoder. So remove those four pieces. Then you need to remove the front cable management piece because the PCB, if you guys see if I put this PCB in here, um, you can see the front part of the PCB by the scroll wheel. That normally, whoops, that normally would conflict with the PCB. This straight piece right here would be in the way of the scroll wheel, so that needs to go. Um, and then obviously the back piece is over here. So there's two tall pegs and then two short pegs to the right and left of those. All four of those need to be removed. And then something I did to make the PCB fit a little bit better is I've actually done a couple of things here. So first of all, you guys can see these two rear posts. I've kept both of them. This is what the screw will go into. Fortunately, the lighting in here sucks. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if that makes it any better or worse. Um, well, whatever. Uh, so what I've actually done is, if you look at the front part here, the focus is, yeah, you can see I've cut a groove into the bottom of that mount. And what that allows you to do is that allows the PCB to actually go in and slide under, okay, so it actually sits underneath there, and that way it keeps it from rattling up and down. And then, so again, you don't want to remove a lot of that. How I did that is it actually took me a couple tries. You want to be very, very slow. With all of this stuff, you want to be very slow, unless you have a whole bunch of the shells sitting around like I do. Um, you know, take off less than what you think, and then do a test fit, and if you're like, oh, I need to take out a little bit more, take it out and remove a little bit more and do bit by bit. Because you can always remove more plastic, but you can't really add plastic back. Um, but on that note of adding plastic back, actually something that you guys see I did here is these globs are hot glue. So all I did is I just put the PCB in. Okay. And then I squirted hot glue along the corners here and then let it cool and then I pulled the PCB out and they remained in this shape. So this does add a little bit of weight to the back, which actually isn't all that bad of a thing. Um, but uh, yeah, and that just allows it to fit a little bit better into the rear of the lower shell. And then, um, so another big problem with this is getting the PCB to actually stay mounted. Luckily though, for us, something interesting here is when you put the top shell back on, see how that wants to pop back up? That is actually due to, um, there's this switch and this switch are a little bit too far forward, and that makes it contact with the plastic at the front here. However, what that means is that when you put that together, oops, well the scroll wheel is rattling, but there's no rattle to it, which is normally a really big issue. Um, so that just allows you to have some friction points that holds the PCB in the front side, and then the rear side is held in by, again, that notch that you made in the screw mount. So uh, there you go. And then the very last thing I think I did, oh no, a couple more things. The last thing I did to the lower shell, though, as you guys can see here, hopefully, is right on where the lens sits. The lens normally sits something like that, okay? But the problem is, it actually needs to go farther back towards the back end of the mouse. And you can see because of the triangular mount here, 
the focus is. It's triangular, so the the lens will actually want to slide upward. So you need to remove that. So what I literally just did is I just cut that triangle piece in half. You might be able to see the top view better. See the upper piece, the triangle, that's cut off, but the lower piece is still there. And that allows the lens, when I push it back, it stays, and it doesn't want to slide upward. And then, I guess that's pretty much it for the lower shell. You could do some weight reduction if you wanted to. I also removed the sticker that's down here, um, just because I don't want that to be interfering with anything potentially in the future. And then the very last mod that I did is to the cable. So, and kind of the cable routing. So the, how the cable routing works in my mouse is, um, you know, I'll start out with the cable. First of all, this, the T-shape at the top here, the upper stick of the T, I cut away at some of the sides there. You can see that side and that side. I cut away at both of those, and that allows it to sit a little bit more flush with the plastic in here. And then also, uh, I don't think the camera will pick it up, but this U-shaped hole at the front, I expanded slightly, okay? And then down here, I deepened, let's see if I can show you guys, this T-shaped piece fits in there, something like that, okay? it focuses oh Jesus there you go so that's how the t-shaped piece fits into there so it wasn't fitting low enough so I took out more material from underneath and that allows the t-shape to, to sink in a little bit more and then I'm just gonna go ahead and reassemble this just so you guys kind of see how it all goes together so let's start out with um, this is actually not my preferred shell, but it should do the trick. So, put the cable in. I usually like to stick the lens to the PCB, something like that. And then kind of pre-cable route it. Gotta go back end in first because of the ledge. Make sure that the sensor line lines up. Make sure that the, um, oops, that the T-shape goes into the front there. Whoops. And then I actually have my cable going underneath the PCB. So there we go. Now it's in. Now again, this isn't really, you can see it's wiggling. It's not really held in by anything. It's not until you put on the upper shell that you'll, um, oh, I almost forgot. Okay, so I'll just show you guys. So if I just put a stock, these are the stock buttons right and left that I put in. If I put those in, you can see the scroll wheel coincides with to see how it's it's prying them upward stupid light see how it's prying them upward yeah so you do actually need this was my first attempt you can see it's very messy I made the hole way too big over here uh, a cleaner looking hole is more something like this so you can see all I did is I just expanded this groove downward and again it's a guess and check kind of thing you want to take away a little bit of material and um, See, and then wait until it's enough. You don't want to. You don't want to take away too much material, then regret it, and then have to deal with either a crappy shell or going out and buying another. So, um, yeah, that's the last mod that I guess you have to do. So the to put the sh put these two pieces back together, you uh, slide this part through here, and then you actually want to make sure that the clickers, these little eye-shaped pieces at the top and bottom, this focuses. You want to make sure those goes over the nubs that they're on, and then you want to press the rear part down. There you go. Okay. And then I just kind of make sure that the cable's fully seated. Reverse the process. Okay, we have a little bit of a conflict here or something. So it does take a bit of guesswork, like you do have to go back and forth. Like right now, my shell is too tight for whatever reason. You can see my right click works, my left click doesn't. 
scroll wheel is fine, but um, yeah, that's too tight. So this is where I would be going back and forth and testing different shells because each one works slightly differently. Like, see, that one works better. Now that actually feels quite nice. So then you just redo the screw. There you have it. You want to make sure, of course, your sensors aligned. That's one problem with the N-Mouse 4K shell. You guys take a look here. I got a screw in there or something. The sensor placement is actually slightly towards the lower half of the mouse, which throws off my aim slightly with the stock shell, which is really a shame. Whereas this one is much more centered. So, uh, with that, I guess, thank you guys for watching. If you have any other specific questions, you can ask them. Um, yeah, this isn't really something that I expect you guys to do. It was just requested to me by uh, one of the guys on the Discord that I'm on, Must Be Demon. Um, and I always want to help you guys out with it when it comes to more in-depth questions. You know, I get a lot of questions that are, like, pretty basic knowledge that, like, you could easily find out by Googling. But I know, like, I'm the only person who's doing this with the NMouse 4K, probably. So, if I'm the only resource on it, I totally, you know, I want to I share the knowledge. That's all I'm saying. So... Yeah, um, with that, I guess thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any other like ideas that you might want me to try, I'd totally be down. Um, this has pretty much been my go-to mouse for the last little bit. It's still not perfect, but um, I'm you know still tinkering around and seeing what I can do to improve it and make it really, really something that I'm going to be using every day. So yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next.